This is Milano Centrale, arguably Italy's most impressive railway station and certainly one of Europe's grander places to catch a train. Taking its cues from Washington Union Station, it still bears the ornate sculptures and frescoes added during Italy's fascist period, making it very much a station of its time. Today, Lombardy's regional trains, national and international intercity services, and Italy's front rank Freccia Rossa trains can all be caught here. Everything this morning is completely normal in Milano Centrale, until that is, you get to Platform 7, and there's a bit of time travel going on. After World War II, Italy experienced a post-war economic miracle and a wholesale reimagination of Italian style and culture was underway. In 1952, Italy was about to redefine luxury railway travel by designing the Sette Bello, a unique train inspired by the designs of the about-to-be-born jet era of air travel. The most remarkable feature, a forward-facing first-class observation lounge, making it the most distinctive train of its era. The Sette Bello design is a real classic and a beacon of civil engineering. What Concord means to the British and French, the Sette Bello is to Italians, a reflection of the high point of post-war reinvention and progress. And thankfully, the Italian state has just finished refurbishing this example of the design known as the Arlecchino, or Harlequin in English. The Fondazione FS Railway Heritage Organization is running today's trip. The Arlecchino is a shorter, four-carriage version of the Sette Bello, released in time to ferry passengers to the 1960 Olympics in Rome. The driver sits high above the observation lounge in a cab, which is very similar to the British Deltic locomotives. Our train is attracting a lot of attention, and even the staff are happy to pose for pictures. It's clear this refurbishment has been of an exquisite standard. Every hand-beaten panel has been beautifully repainted and finished, no detail forgotten and no expense for polish or shine spared. I'm not sure what the people getting off this commuter train must be thinking, but it's definitely strange to see this beautiful train in real life. I'd only ever seen this train in old railway annuals before, it having retired from service in 1986, the year I was born. On board, the train is equally impressive. There are Belvedere observation lounges front and rear with swiveling panorama seats, a jaunty cloth trim just like the original, and the saloons have also been faithfully restored. Upholstered in velour with these fetching cloth antimacassars, no detail is missed. It's always interesting to note, however, the small number of additional features to make this train acceptable for service in 2022, like these charge points. Other additions include central door locking and cab signaling, which are both necessary for safe operation these days. We depart at 9.20 sharp and will be taking the main line east towards Venice, travelling through Brescia and stopping in Verona, and then through Vicenza to Padova, where we stop again and finally to Venice. Milan to Verona has a high-speed line linking the two cities, but will be on the older, classic route for our journey. My main curiosity is getting a look at the facilities on board. 
Two lavatories are at the end of my carriage and they have been restored very nicely indeed with stainless steel fittings everywhere and even potpourri instead of a modern air freshener. Classy. Despite being on the classic lines, we'll still achieve some impressive speeds on this journey, soon clocking up 150 kilometers per hour. The train itself is capable of 200 kilometers per hour. On board in the second car from the front is the Arlecchino Cafe, which has a gorgeous Faima Espresso maker, I believe a replica of a 1940s design. Incredibly, the espresso and biscuits are all free to everyone. Another small detail, each carriage has its own colour scheme. I really love the green seats found in the front carriage. What's your favourite colour scheme? Of course, the place you really want to be is here, right at the front in the lounge with a driver's eye view. I'm amazed at how many different types of people, even plenty of women, have come to see the train by the line side and take pictures. Fondazioni FS have marketed this train rightly as being more than just an impressive piece of equipment to ride on. It's actually part of Italy's national story. There's one thing you can never book in advance when planning trips, and that's the weather. Things are about to get a little bit rainy. That's the busiest railway cafe car I've seen in quite a while. It's great to see this train is packed full of enthusiasts and so many different sorts of people as well. Lots of women and families, children, even dogs I've seen on board today. But um, my reward actually for the early start is this, a beautiful espresso. Cheers. Even the damp weather can't stop us seeing the picturesque Lake Garda from the train, though it's arguable which is more stunning, the lake or our magnificent train. Our first stop is Verona Porta Nuova. Nice to get a bit of fresh air here in Verona. We're just here for a few minutes um, and we're heading off at, well, it's supposed to be 11.07, but as you can see from the sign here, we are running with about 10 minutes of delay, but um, does it really matter? We cross the Adige River and continue east.
Of course, you're probably wondering how small that cab is. Well, it's not actually that small. The driver sits in a well actually behind the observation lounge, and there's even space for a second man's seat. This is Alta Vita Tavernelle, which until the early 1960s had a tramway connection to the remote town of Recuaro in the foot of the Little Dolomites. And yes, there's another eager spotter. Don't forget, by the way, to subscribe, drop me a comment and leave a like on the video. Subscribing will make sure you're notified of all my future videos and I have some spectacular train journeys still to post on the channel this year. Padova is our last stop before Venice. Now, there's no need to actually book the full journey. Shorter journeys, like Padova to Venice, were available for much lower prices. And I'll go into tickets and how to book at the end of the video. This is Venice Mestre, which is on the mainland. All eyes are now on the front of the train as we prepare to cross the water to Venice itself. The Venice Railway Viaduct was completed as early as 1846 and still carries trains today, a vital link to Italy's most distinctive city and our terminus of Santa Lucia station. And so our trip is over. I paid 60 euros one way for this trip, a stunningly low price considering that's lower than the regular base first class fare on the normal high speed trains on this route. This is a special heritage charter train and so it runs infrequently and can pop up all over Italy on some very different routes. You can only book on the official Fondazione FS website, and although they're often slow to release tickets, you can often get advance notice by following their Instagram, which is advertising the next trip between Florence and Venice on the 8th of October. And even more good news, a real 1952 seven-carriage Sertibello is also in the final stages of restoration, which even includes a restaurant car instead of a cafe. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for this one. These are exciting times for Italian railway heritage, which has positioned itself differently to heritage trains in the UK by linking these trains with Italy's 20th century history and its national reinvention. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.